guys, welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday, the show where we take user submitted videos and uh, talk a little bit about them. Try to get people lifting, moving a little bit better, a little bit more efficient, and staying further from injury. To get the day started, we have a video submission from George, and I think that's how you say his name, because it's DJ O R D J E. So I'm gonna pronounce that as George because Honestly, as a Anglophone, that's the best I can do. All right, so our first video from George here is some deadlifts. Now, it looks quite good on the first rep, actually, but subsequent reps, things start to kind of slide. So we're starting to see the hips start a little bit higher. We're starting to see the back round out a little bit more. Uh, so I think one of the biggest things that you can do, George, is I think you can try to maybe reset a little bit more between reps. Uh, and as you progress throughout the set, try not to lose patience. Try not to forget to set up, to pull the slack out, to get your lats tight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It looks like you know how to incorporate all these cues, but it looks like they kind of start to go out the window as the set progresses. So we need to work on consistency between reps and trying to maintain technique from rep to rep within a given set. Our next video from George is some squatting. Now squatting of the three is probably what looks like uh, your most comfortable lift, your best lift. We're a little bit loose in that bottom position. Uh, I think you could maybe afford to tighten that up a little bit, uh, be a little bit more purposeful with when and how much you loosen to get that stretch reflex. Uh, but beyond that, honestly, your squat mechanics look really, really good. So I wouldn't go changing too, too much there. Lastly, we have a bench submission from George and we're looking pretty loose in that bottom position. Uh, one of the things I would try to do is some light touch bench. Uh, try to get used to just touching the shirt almost. Uh, even if you don't necessarily adapt your competition bench press to be that style of movement, uh, I've, I've found in my experience that that is a useful lift and a useful accessory movement for those lifters who happen to uh, to be a little bit looser and dump a little bit more on their touch. Um, I think that goes a long ways to sort of exaggerate the style of movement or maybe the opposing uh, sort of way of thought for a given lift. So people who maybe smash into a deadlift, not necessarily overhauling their whole technique. If they're strong, they're developed, they're injury free, you know, they've been doing it that way for years but to intentionally do some stuff that's gonna pop, force them to slow down off the floor and take a little bit more time with things. And it's gonna suck, but in my experience, that can be a pretty beneficial thing to train somebody in the opposite style. Uh, so just a bit of an aside there, but I would incorporate some of those uh, and maybe play around with an extended period of time where you're doing a light pause, light touch bench and see which one ends up being stronger. It might be that you switch over and it's no good and it's tough and it's a struggle, in which case, useful assistance exercise, probably not way to go for competition bench. Uh, if you switch over or you do a fair bit of work in that style and it immediately is stronger, more powerful, um, you know, feels better, joints feel better, recovery's better, then you know, maybe that's just the way to go with all your benches. Anyways, George, I hope that helps, buddy. Um, also, just as an aside, it looks like you're training at Fortis, which is really cool. I have a client there, shout out Ash if you're watching, uh, and I will likely be there at the end of April. So keep your ears peeled, ears peeled, keep your ears open and eyes peeled uh, for some potential promo material for Bryce's visit to Fortis. Uh, just throwing that out there. Our next video submission comes from Arturo. Now Arturo, it looks like is doing some sort of exhibition push-pull meet. Um, he's wearing one of Omar's Peach Gang shirts and I don't think that's necessary. Like he's not wearing a singlet or anything. So I'm assuming this is some sort of exhibition. If it's not, forgive me, but uh, it just looks like an exhibition setting with some judges, like a mock meet kind of thing. Anyways, I digress. Uh, biggest thing it looks like we're making a mistake with with the deadlift is just not setting properly in the bottom position. You'll notice that our, as Arturo gets to the lockout, it kind of stops and he's forced to like kind of reset himself before he completely finishes the lockout. That to me, almost 10 times out of 10, points towards a little bit of rounding in the start position in the lumbar spine. So we're getting to the top 
everything's locked except for the low back and then the low back's having to be pulled through after the hips and everything else is extended. If we can get that lumbar spine into a little bit of extension or at least a neutral position when we start the lift, then we're gonna be much, much smoother through the lockout. One thing you might notice with this, however, is that it will likely make the lift a lot tougher off the floor to start with. Not to say that you can't get strong in this position, but you might have to take one step back to make two steps forward, if that makes sense. The other submission that came from Arturo was a bench press. Now bench, uh, I'm noticing sort of a recurring theme. Last week's video, today's video, we're getting a lot of people dumping in the bottom range of motion. Now I talked a lot about that with George just earlier, so I'll just kind of gloss over it here. But what I want you to do um, is try to get a little bit tighter in that bottom position. With your bench, Arturo, we are seeing the elbows come back out behind the bar, which regardless of whether you're a sort of dump and heave bench presser, in my experience is not a good thing. So let's work on keeping those elbows tucked in under the bar, uh, at least to the point where we're seeing straight up and down from the side. Uh, this, that cue specifically has greatly helped some bench pressers uh, that I know and that I've worked with in terms of preventing shoulder overuse injuries. So if we can keep things better aligned, most times that's gonna help. So let's work on that. Our next submission comes from Marjorie. Now Marjorie has just switched over to uh, conventional deadlifts. Now she's said she's traditionally a sumo puller, but feels more, more stronger, uh, feels stronger in a conventional pattern. So she said she wants to dial in the technique before she really starts pushing the weight. And well, Marjorie, you've come to the right place. So what we're seeing here are some really good mechanics, except we're getting a little bit of rounding in that low back, specifically right as you start the lift. Um, so it looks like what I would get you to try if I were with you in person, is I get you to try a little bit of a, not necessarily a wider stance, although that might be one of the things that we'd, we'd try out, uh, but <clears throat> trying to open the hips up within that conventional stance. So trying to push the knees out into the arms a little bit and trying to make sure that we're uh, opening the hips up so we can achieve a flatter back uh, a little more easily. So a lot of times when we move the knees out of the way, we're able to get that last little bit of back extension, we're able to hold a better, more neutral position, uh, and it just makes for a better deadlift. So I would try that out, and if you can't open the, the hips up enough, maybe try a little bit of a wider conventional deadlift. This will necessitate that your arms move out further, which will lengthen your range of motion, put you in a little bit lower starting position, but if it means that you can get a neutral back position, oftentimes that trade-off can be worth it. Marjorie's other video submission was a low, some low bar squats. Now again, she said she's just kind of getting used to this movement pattern. Uh, it looks like the only thing I'm seeing is a little bit of hesitation into the bottom position. Uh, so one thing that I see very often with uh, more novice and intermediate lifters is we get a little bit worried about the bottom position. A lot of people, it's in the bench. Hence, we see a lot of that dump and heave kind of stuff. We wanna get in and out of that bottom range of motion as quick as possible because psychologically, that's where we worry about failing. What I would recommend, Marjorie, is I would almost recommend some exposure therapy, uh, which essentially just means put yourself into those ranges of motion that are problematic and put yourself into those ranges of motion that you know, are psychologically maybe worrisome. So work with some pause squatting, work with some tempo squatting, and try to get used to and comfortable with being in the bottom position so that we're not rushing in and out of it because that can cause mistakes if we're not purposeful uh, and without intent, or sorry, if we don't have enough intent with how we're moving in those bottom positions. So that would be my recommendation with your squat. Other than those a uh, couple little things about your bottom position. I think the squat in general looks really good. So I would just keep practicing, try and take those few things I said into account and hopefully that goes a long ways for you. Our next submission is a conventional deadlift from Michael. Now Michael's from Poland, so shout out to Poland. What's up, dude? Um, it looks like your grip might be a little bit wide on this deadlift. Uh, it looks like it's forcing you to lose position a little bit off the floor. So like I was saying to Marjorie, when your grip is wider, it, it, it lengthens your range of motion and it causes you to have, have to have lower uh, shoulders relative to the bar. If we can narrow your grip a little bit, and I'm, it's tough to say because this is a side angle video, but when it gets to the top, it looks like there's a fair bit of distance between the edge of your hand and the outside of your quad. So what I would try to do is I'd try to move that in a little bit 
and that should allow you to like bring your chest up a little bit, get a little bit more or better extension through the thoracic spine, as well as get those shoulder blades locked into a bit of a better position. Now, this should put you in a better starting position, which should fix, I'd say 95, 99% of the issues I'm seeing with your deadlift. And the biggest issues are, like I said, kind of rounding out in that upper back and losing shoulder position. If we can get those things into a more advantaged position to start off with, then the, the odds of us losing that position uh, would sort of logically lessen. That's my opinion on your deadlift. Um, and one thing that you mentioned in your email, Michael, was that you struggled to get your quads to work uh, in both squatting and deadlifting, or that you struggle to feel like your quads are doing the work, like knee extension is enough of a factor or enough of a part of these movements. So what I would recommend is really target that. Uh, not only when you're performing these movements, being mindful of it, uh, especially on warm-up sets where you're able to really, really dial in the technique, but also I would target it with your accessory and supplemental movements. I would do things like uh, front squats, leg press, single leg work. Uh, those are all gonna really help to target that knee extension biased kind of movement pattern. Uh, as well as, like I said, uh, just being mindful in how you're moving and how you're performing these movements to try to bias and get more out of that uh, knee extension movement as a part of these bigger movements. Now our last submission comes from a guy named Duck Tran. Now Duck's doing some low bar squats here and he says he really has trouble staying upright. He told me that he's 28% femurs. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I've never heard of anybody taking that kind of a, or that exact of a sort of anthropometric, anthropometric measurement. Um, it, it's sort of an interesting anecdote, but I don't think that practically it's gonna give you a whole lot to work with. Like, oh, if you're 28%, then we have to do these three different cues. Honestly, the biggest thing that I'm seeing is you're going way too deep. Uh, you're really burying your squats. I think you could maybe be able to stay a little bit more upright if you cut the depth a little bit. But the other thing, and I think this is the biggest thing, is that maybe you're just not gonna be a super upright squatter. Maybe that's just the case. Maybe that your long femurs will necessitate a little bit more of a torso lean. And in that case, I think you should just embrace it and stop trying to stay so upright. I would allow yourself to lean. I would allow yourself to get a little bit of a steeper torso angle, uh, or sorry, a little bit of a more bent over or, or bent forward torso angle, and just embrace that. Practice that, uh, use a little bit more lean, and that should probably, that's probably gonna be the solution here, more so than changing a bunch of things uh, despite your anatomy to spite your anatomy to try and be more upright. Um, that might just not be how you're gonna be squatting the most weight or squatting the strongest. So maybe let's embrace that torso lean a little bit. Now the next thing that Duck submitted was also a uh, sumo deadlift here. Now it looks like you pull into a really, really good position and then you pull further, you dump your pelvis underneath you to try and get your hips like super, super close to the bar and get more upright than I think you need to be again here. Um, so maybe that is kind of the, the pattern here is we're trying to get a little bit too upright in the torso. I think you could maintain a much better back angle if you let the hips stop before you kind of push them in underneath you. Uh, I think if you started with not necessarily a higher position, but hips further from the bar, that would help preserve your back angle, which would make you stronger throughout most of the range of motion. Again, as with most of these uh, technical changes that I offer people in terms of the sumo deadlift and making it, uh, you know, more like mine, I guess, more like what I see is kind of the, uh, the standard for a good sumo deadlift is it's probably going to make it a little bit tougher off the floor. So don't be surprised if you get into a better spinal position and it feels like you're really having to do a lot of work to get it started. Like you're really having to extend the knees and use the quads to get the lift moving. That's normal. Like I said, might be necessary to take one step back to take two, so two steps forward. But yeah, that would be the two biggest things that I would just allow a little bit more torso lean, allow your hips to be a little bit further from the bar. It's not always a bad thing, even though it has been touted as, oh, you gotta get your hips super close to the bar, you gotta be a super upright squatter. Not always the case. Let's, let's change your mechanics to suit your anatomy, because you can't change your anatomy. Anyways guys, that's it for Form Check Friday. Thank you for tuning in. We're up to about December 15th or so. 
I know we're still behind, but like I said last video, this is the way it goes. Um, thanks again for submitting. Any comments or questions about any of the things I said or any of the videos we saw here, leave them in the comments below. Like if you liked it, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next week for Form Check Friday.